All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Rob here at Smirking and Reviews, back to talk about more dark. It's day six, so we're doing episode six uh, of season two. It is called An Endless Cycle, and I don't think I need a script again because this is pretty much the most straightforward episode of a time travel show I've ever seen. Um, because this is Jonas coming back from 1921 uh, to prevent his father from killing himself and setting this whole thing in motion. So full spoilers uh, if you haven't seen the episode. Um, but I gotta say that if everything is just all laid out, then there's no point in, in, in running the whole we gotta change the past gag. Because it, it, I, I'm done trying to think that oh, well, this, this is going to happen and then it's all going to stop because it just doesn't. Every single instance that somebody tries to stop something, like I've said before, like, it's all eventual. So everything we do to try to prevent something just ensures that it happens. Everything's eventual. And so I'm, I'm, while I'm enjoying it, I mean, it's just kind of like futile, right? Everything is futile. Everything that happened, happened, like I've said. And I guess they're starting to embrace that. It's just, <clears throat> there are little moments that explain things from how people think later on. Like where the whole, we're perfect for each other thing comes from. And the very conveniently found St. Christopher medallion, patron saint of sa uh, travelers, and cliche, you know, plot <laughs> contrivances? I don't know. Very convenient plot points just all of a sudden brought out there. Um, but there is some interesting stuff still happening in here, even if it is just, well, that was pointless. It was good, and it explains more, but it didn't really, all it does is then create another question of, okay, well then what's the next thing? Um, but seeing, like, Mikkel understanding it, that things are coming together in a way that nobody really fully understands... It's, everybody keeps talking about deja vu in this episode. It's like, Michael, real, you know, not going to the party. It's, it's like, he can't have forgotten that, you know, it's his mother and father. <laughs> so, you know, how has he, he, has he been like this the whole time? When did he stop getting the medication that the, the nurse was giving him? Um, but also, like, later on when Hannah sees young Mikkel and has that, I know you. And it, it happens periodically throughout this whole episode, where it really does feel like this is where everything starts. Um, but again, everything's just like, like, from the ultimate fist bump, okay? So he now, now he knows how to prove to Mikkel that he's from the future. Um... We, you know, Ulrich's, I want to talk about Ulrich then, like, he's, compli he's a complicated guy, or is he just a guy who wants his cake and uh, eat it too? Because he seems to be attracted to his wife, but she just said that, oh, she doesn't want to because lady things. You know, maybe that's an excuse she's been using or something, and is that why he finally goes with Hannah, who's been desperate to, to get with him her whole life? And this party is their chance to, to start? Was this the start of their thing? Kind of almost like how it would have been the start to Jonas and Martha's thing. And that whole sex scene wasn't a dream. It was just something we were never shown before. So, okay. You know, does that mean they're going to throw a pregnancy in our face? Like all of a sudden, you know, Jonas is going to have a baby with Martha? Because how long has it been? And with everything going on, would she even notice? Maybe? I don't know. Or maybe this is something, one of her secrets. I, you know, maybe the girl in the future is, that I didn't know who it was, like, that hit him in the face. Maybe that's their daughter. Boom. I have a few theories going forward, actually. Um, so, since, I'm assuming you watched this, okay? Everybody, like I said, spoilers. So, Magnus is in, the, is in 1921 with Adam. Okay, so what I'm wondering is, and they're, they're desperate to protect this, it seems. You know, why don't you tell him his bigger role in this, blah, blah, blah. Could it be 
that if it is an endless cycle, right? But what if they're all like their own parents, their own fathers and 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 wives and and mothers? I mean, what if they all the entire fucking town, right? <laughs> went back to 1921 before the explosion like so that way that's the way they save everybody that they can't prevent the destruction but maybe some of them are able to escape it and start and it's that's the cycle that this whole town is on a loop and some of them maybe got lost in the future I don't know but it's what I was kind of feeling when, as soon as I saw Magnus, was okay. If that's Magnus, then who's next to him, and you know how many other people are there, and is those are the people in the picture just all the kids, everybody that's kind of involved, including Noah, and maybe Noah's just not understanding, and maybe the, the papers that he saw, maybe that explains like the paradox or the loop. That he doesn't want to accept that maybe he, he's been thinking some grand purpose because there is this thing about God that's brought up in this a few times about the whole God never makes a mistake or man always has a plan and blah 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 and that kind of nonsense because I don't think there is fine if that's what you got to tell yourself okay um <laughs> uh what else do we have here? Well, yeah, then Mikkel gets Rubella, which is, a, you know, a weird time to get that. But when Jonas and Mikkel find each other, this was a good scene, and for a second I had hope. Because it seemed like maybe we were about to get somewhere. And then, yeah, he just brings up, well, what if this is just you showing me how to do everything? And, oh, it was you by the cave. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Well, then that, none of this matters. He's going to find, there's going to be a reason that he has to show him. And enter Claudia, old, long, gray-haired Claudia from the future, who just comes there and tells him, this isn't what's supposed to happen. You're supposed to fight Adam, which is yourself. He doesn't want to change things and blah, blah, blah. Now, <sighs> Who do you believe now? Who do you believe? Because I, you know, if Jonas is a good person and he's done all this and he looks like this because of time traveling so much, I want to believe him that he's there's a reason for all this and that it'll all get explained by Adam eventually. Whenever we're through with all this, it'll all make sense. But then there's Claudia. Claudia, who puts that question mark in front of everything about how, like, who... But didn't they say not to trust Claudia? And her, and her whole thing that she's been running the plant, and her and Alexander, who's up to something, who's looking into the mysteries from 30 years ago, and I don't know if that's all out of self-preservation or if he's actually on to, like, thinking he's on to something. Because I just don't trust this guy. I don't trust anybody that has to do with the power plant. Even Claudia, because, I, I don't know, there's just something off about the whole thing, and how they run things in the future, but maybe it's all just a set of, like, perceptions, like how people are perceiving a certain situation to be bad or good, you know, and they're just doing what they think is right, everybody, including Claudia, but I don't know. Um, what else is there really to talk about, though? <clears throat> because they, you know, they all go, Mikkel writes the letter, and you know he's going to kill himself, and Jonas goes off with Claudia to keep going on the journey of inevitability. And so, honestly, it just feels like we're kind of just being led down a path that if there aren't going to be any right turns all of a sudden in this that I'm being led to believe, like, then... Everybody keeps telling me, wait for episode 8, right? Of course. We're going to get these big revelations and things like that. But at the same time, I'm just kind of like, well, if it is all eventual, then how big of a surprise can it be? I hope it's, I hope, I hope I'm like a completely, you know, flabbergasted. Because this has been a pretty interesting run. And uh, I'm enjoying this a lot more than actually than I did season 1. But I think it was because I was 
figuring out the world and the names and I mean it took me till now to pretty much get everybody's names down uh, what else so we got Charlotte's husband he's been sleeping with the guy out in the trailer his daughter sees it but again like how much of this is even important except the explaining a little bit of the characters like backstory and why they are the way they are a little bit more so I've got to say that of all the episodes this is kind of a filler episode but it's also kind of disappointing because we were on the trajectory to change things um, and now it's just more of the same like one more thing to go do we've got two episodes left uh, and I know there will be more episodes and, and, and more chances to see where this is all going but just this is my first kind of little eh in the road for me because I, even though I, I do, I found this episode to be very entertaining, it just story-wise, plot-wise, I'm starting to get a little concerned, but not too concerned yet. I'm just saying, I'm, I'm kind of putting myself on warning to not get myself too overly hyped at uh, what I want and think are going to happen to what actually happens. This might be more straightforward than I think it's going to be, but anyway. <laughs> that's really it an endless cycle yeah um, quite a bit so anyway if you liked this review please hit the like button comment share subscribe if you're liking the content please hit subscribe it would really help us out so otherwise this is Robert smirking and review saying we'll be back tomorrow with episode 7 the penultimate of the season unless this is split up into two because somebody said that there's gonna be more episodes later this year and I kind of do like how Netflix does that, but I guess it's just two binges instead of one. <laughs> Draw it out. But this is definitely better than fucking Full House, I'll tell you that much for sure. So, anyway, this is Robin Smirking Interview saying I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. So, have a great one. Bye. If I can turn this